If you'll be turning to Matthew chapter 7, that's where we'll be this morning. Matthew chapter 7. A couple of things that I think I overlooked in the announcements this morning. First of all, Lynn's brother Larry has made some good improvements, so we want to be thankful about that and pray that that, that trend continues. And when the folks from West Texas State come to visit with us in two weeks, we're having an all-church fellowship. That means that you get to cook and uh, I get to eat. So I just wanted to make a couple of suggestions. Uh, I like banana pudding. I like deviled eggs. And don't tell Uncle Buck that we're doing it. That's the, th the three things that, that I just don't want us to do. All right. What I want us to try to do is compare two passages. So we're going to start in chapter 7, verse 15, and read a few verses down to 23. And then we're going to go back to the beginning of the chapter to probably the more famous of the two uh, passages and talk a little bit about the first six verses at the beginning of the chapter. We'll tie those two things together. The thing that we want to try to draw from this is the difference between discernment and judgment. Is it okay to be discerning? Is it okay to be judgmental? So we're going to look at those two ideas as we go through. But let's start reading in chapter 7 and verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and in your name perform many miracles? And I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Now go straight back to the beginning of the chapter, chapter 7, beginning in verse 1. Do not judge or you too will be judged. In the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give to dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to the pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Let's start by trying to give a little bit of definition. Uh, for discernment, I've written down that recognizing a person's teachings and actions are wholesome or not wholesome. The scripture sometimes, especially the King James, uses the word sound. And by sound, it means healthy. Are they teaching things that are healthy? Are they sharing things, doing things, being things, producing things that are healthy? And we can look at the outcome of a person's life. We can look at the things that they're doing and the things that they're saying. And we can decide whether those things are wholesome, healthy, useful, sound, or not. But judgment is more involved with deciding the ultimate worth of an individual. Not just what they're doing or what they're saying or what they're producing, but what they're worth. The idea of whether they are worthy of praise or worthy of judgment whether they're worthy of salvation or worthy of condemnation. There's a couple of phrases that kind of dance around in my mind when I think about this, see if they're familiar to you. 
Uh, that guy is acting above his pay grade. Uh, that guy needs to learn to stay in his own lane. Those sound familiar? I think that when we look at someone's life, we can decide for ourselves whether that's healthy or not, but perhaps it's above our pay grade to move over into the area of judgment. Take a look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. This passage jumped out at me one day and has, at least to some degree, changed the way I view my job, my responsibility as a Christian. John chapter 12, we're going to read beginning in verse 44. John 12, verse 44. So Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in the darkness. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. I did not come to the world to judge the world. I came to the world to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Isn't that an amazing passage? You think about all the billions of people that have lived on the planet throughout history. One and only one person has ever had the right, the credentials, could stay in their own lane and be the judge. And he says, I did not come to the world to judge the world. You have one that judges you. The words that I speak to you will judge you in the last day. I'm only here to tell you what the Father said. That's a life-changing moment when you realize that the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ultimate authority, the perfect sacrifice said, well, maybe I could be the judge, but I don't want that job. That's not why I'm here. That's not why I came. I came so that people could have light. I came so that people could have salvation. That's the reason that I'm here. If that's good enough for Jesus, that ought to be good enough for Jesus' people. Now that doesn't mean we shouldn't be discerning. That doesn't mean we shouldn't take a close look at what people tell us or make decisions about our relationships based on how people live. Uh, I've known some people that were a lot better judges of character than I am. They could see in other people that hope for the future when the present wasn't that bright, and they could nurture and they could care and they could kind of move people along. And, and a few years down the line, you see somebody that's really doing a great deal of good in the Lord's body where I would look at them and I would be like, well, we need to go a different way because that person's not going to be what we need them to be in the church. Amen? I just, I'm not a great judge of character in that way. I can't see as clearly as some other people can see. But in discerning what's going on right now in front of me, what they're saying, what they're doing, how they're living, I can make those discernments. I think most of us can by comparing the way they're living to what the Lord has called us to do. But when we move over into the area of judgment, we move into a completely different area. And there are some really unpleasant results when people have a judgmental attitude. Now, I hate to ask you to do this because to do it you have to be judgmental. But think of somebody real quick that you know that is judgmental. They've always got an opinion of whether somebody's good or bad, uh, whether they are eternally salvageable or not. Have you met them? Okay. I have too. I have been them, at least on some occasions in my life, and I'm sure you have been too. But here are three things that go awry when we take on the role of being the judge. Number one, a lack of mercy breeds a lack of mercy 
in the people around us. Jesus says, judge not or you too will be judged. I take that to mean the heavenly father, but it's also true in the earthly realm. People who are judgmental find it difficult to make close friendships because the people around them know that they're constantly being evaluated and constantly being judged. They're tough to be friends with. They're tough to have a relationship with because we know that they're making decisions about our ultimate worth. And so sometimes we try real hard to do the things we think they want us to do and sometimes we just throw our hands up and judge them back. Uh, if you do Facebook, you know that there's a lot of that that goes on. Just open ugliness from person to person based on a judgmental attitude. Uh, I don't remember many of my in-school crushes, but I had a long-lasting crush on my sixth grade teacher. Her name was Susan Willoughby. She died several years ago in a car accident. But the school where, we, where I went to school where she taught was one of those new 1970s open-air design schools. So we didn't have hallways. All of the school, all of the uh, classrooms faced a big area, a big open plaza in the middle. And between the classroom and the plaza, there was a cement ledge that ran all the way around all of the classrooms. And the teachers would send you to the ledge if you were a problem in the classroom. And it's possible that from time to time, I found myself seated on the ledge looking at the big plaza. Well, one day I took my Bible with me to class and we had a, a special table that we could sit and read uh, if we'd finished our work. So I finished my work and I took my Bible and I went over and sat at the table and I started reading. And Miss Willoughby walked by me and she just kind of uh, casually, flippantly said, yes, you need to read for your sins. And I said, judge not that ye be not judged. And Miss Willoughby said, go sit on the ledge. So this, is a very, this, this passage is very near and dear to my heart. It makes me think about her. Uh, what do people think about me? Is that important? Does it really matter? Again, uh, I, I'm on Facebook maybe more than I should be. But I see people who say, this is who I am. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Sometimes they're more pointed. Sometimes they cuss at you to tell you that they don't care. But this is who I am. And if you don't like it, I don't care. I care. Don't you? Don't you want people to like you? Don't you want people to want to be your friend? One of the things that a judgmental attitude will do for you is eliminate possibilities for friendships. It breeds a lack of mercy in the people around us. The second thing, a lack of mercy will breed a lack of mercy from our Heavenly Father. Now that one we know for sure. Jesus, when he is giving the model prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, the King James has. And then when it's over, when, when he's finished giving the model prayer, he then gives a short commentary. He says, because if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. He makes his, an equation out of it. The way that I treat other people is the way that the heavenly Father will treat me. Do not judge or you too will be judged. In the same way you judge others, you will be judged. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The Heavenly Father is watching how we treat each other and it influences the way that He treats us. You say, now wait a minute. Jesus Christ is the ultimate payment price for all sins for all time. Absolutely. And the Heavenly Father forgives us of our sins because of the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no doubt about it. But that does not mean that God doesn't care how we treat each other. John says, how can you say that you love a God you have not seen if you can't love your brother that you have seen? It just doesn't make sense. 
And so a lack of mercy on our part toward others, a judgmental attitude on our part toward others breeds a lack of mercy from our Heavenly Father toward us. He wants us to imitate Him. And since He has given us great mercy, since He has given us amazing forgiveness, we ought also to treat each other accordingly. And finally, you end up looking like a fool. Jesus' hyperbole here is just beautiful. How do you think that you can take that little speck of sawdust out of your brother's eye while you've got this huge two-by-four hanging out of yours? How does that work? First, get rid of your own problems, then you'll see clearly to help somebody else. Is, does he really mean once you're perfect, you can judge? Well, no. We're never going to get rid of all the impairment that we have. It may not be a two before, but there's always going to be something there that keeps us from being qualified to be the judge. There's only one judge. And we're not him. We don't have that right. And he abdicated to a degree by saying, that's not why I'm here. That's not why I came. That's not the purpose of my being on the planet. I want people to have light. I want people to have salvation. But the words that I speak to you, they will judge you. And then I, I can't talk about mercy, I can't talk about a judgmental attitude without throwing in my favorite passage of scripture. Uh, if you go to the YouTube page, it's plastered on the top of the YouTube page. Speak and act like those that are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful but mercy triumphs over judgment. Let me say it one more time. Mercy triumphs over judgment. That's James. Same writer toward the end says, you know, if you find somebody who's in sin and you return them to, to righteousness, you cover a multitude of sins. I think he means not just the sins of the person that's being returned, but the sins of the person who's helping them to get back in a relationship with Christ. The Apostle Peter says exactly the same thing. When we help people come to the light, it shows God our compassion. It shows God our mercy. It's one of the most obvious signs that we are children of our Heavenly Father. Jesus says, this is the way that they'll know that you're my disciples, if you love each other. Showing mercy should be who we are. And so Jesus warns, don't judge, but do be discerning. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we pray that you would help us, that you would protect us, that your Holy Spirit would help us to understand the difference between right and wrong, that we would that we would cling to the things that are right, that we would push aside the things that are wrong, but that we would never, in doing that, endanger anyone's opportunity to be with you. Father, help us not to be judgmental or hateful, but to be merciful and loving and caring and compassionate. Father, help us not to be spotted by the things in the world, not to be polluted by the things we see around us. Help us to be careful and discerning, but Father, help us to just want what Jesus wants, that people might come into the light and that they might be saved. It's in him that we pray. Amen. It may be this morning that you have a need that we don't know about, something that we could help you with by way of a public response. As we stand and sing, just let us know what you need.